morning. Hi, this is HOA Fight Club and I'm Raylene Chifano. I hope you like what I'm doing. Um, if you like and subscribe and ring that bell, then you can see all the videos that I am creating. Today I thought I'd talk about the resale of a unit. So this is mainly for condominium owners and I'm gonna go over Washington State um, laws. So if you're in Washington State, they're called RCW codes. The RCW 6434 and 6490 are for the condominium units um, in Washington State. So when you go to buy a condominium, they will issue you, it's called a resale cert. Well, this resale cert, first of all, should only cost you $275 or less in Washington State. Now, one thing that I found is a HomeWise company is now trying to issue our resale certs and they charge an additional fee for giving you your resale cert. You don't have to pay that fee. The property management company is responsible for giving you that resale cert. So you can go to the law, the 64, 34, 425 and read it and it'll tell you exactly what is supposed to be in your resale cert. So let's go through it. Um, first of all, that there has to be a uh, current uh, within 45 days, um, common expenses or special assessments that they're going to put. Now, when I moved into my home, my condo, they didn't announce that they had redone the roofs. Um, so that wasn't disclosed that they were gonna use $700,000 of the budget that they were showing that we had in savings for roofs. So I had no idea that that money was not going to be in our reserves anymore. It was going to be taken out. They have to show you what's in the reserves in the statement of the resale cert and the budget. But what they didn't disclose is what that money was actually already spent for other things. So you wanna be very careful when you're reading through those budgets. Um, you're gonna get a packet of hundreds and hundreds of pages. The first thing you wanna do is really, really look at the budget. First of all, you wanna make sure that it's the right year. That was the other thing. The audit the association had issued us was from 2012. We had purchased in 2014. So we should have gotten the 2013 audit, um, which doesn't seem like it would be a big deal, but it was because of the roofs. So that big chunk of change was disclosed in the 2013 budget, but it wasn't disclosed in the 2012 budget. You'll also get a statement of who owes the association money. Now, when I looked at that, I thought, okay, are these people past due? Oh, I, and you don't really understand that. Um, if an owner in the association is past due, they have to disclose that to you. You have a right to know if there's one owner past due or if there's 50 owners past due because that affects you and the money that you pay. So you wanna pay really close attention. If there's more than one or two past due, I would say probably not a good thing. Um, and you wanna look at how long they're past due and what the amount is past due. Because a big chunk of change is, again, your responsibility to collect. You are now the joining a corporation that has to collect those past due places, you know, those past due things. The next thing that they have to do is they have to show that if there was any repairs done or if there's something that needs to be done to the unit. Now, I didn't even understand what a unit was. So a unit in Washington state, in a condo unit is, the unit is the interior. You don't own the exterior. You don't own even the walls of your unit. You, anything that's halfway in or halfway out of your unit or a shared common wall is the associations. So you are not responsible for those things. The one thing I learned when I moved in was we had a slider door that had some water intrusion. Now, the previous owner told us it was because she left it open for her dog. What we found out is that no, there was wind-driven rain damage and water intrusion for years on this property. And the association never disclosed it and neither did the previous seller. So when we found that that slider door had issues, the previous seller paid the money to fix it. That is not how this works. If you come into a condominium and there are damages to that condominium on the exterior walls or shared common walls, you wanna make sure that you don't purchase that unit until the association repairs those damages. 
The other thing in Washington State is if they are replacing a door from outside or vinyl siding, that has to have a permit. And the state of Washington, the contractors here seem to be really good at not getting permits. So you really want to make sure that you check for permits, which is my next issue. So when they did their roofs in 2013, 2014, and 2015, they never applied for permits to put on the roofs which now has cost the association a ton of money because not only were the roofs not done right, but the vents for the dryers were never hooked up and the conduit was never ran right. So we have a bunch of issues in our attics at this property with mold and moisture, which was a lot of my damages that had come from all of this. So you really wanna make sure that if there are damages at all to a condo unit on any of the common or limited common walls, halfway in, halfway out, that you make sure that the association takes care of those issues prior to purchase. Do not let them make you wait until after you purchase it. Otherwise, just don't purchase that condo unit, which I suggest anyways. So another is that if the association has more than 5% of their annual income in repairs, which for us is over $130,000, they have to take, they have to disclose that to you in the resale cert. Again, this was not disclosed in my resale search. The roofs were way over that $130,000, so which was over 5% of our budget, and they weren't disclosed in there. There was also garage doors and other common elements that were being fixed that weren't disclosed, that were over the amount of money that the association could spend. So you wanna pay really close attention to that. The next one is a reserve study. <sighs> I have issues with reserve studies. The reserve study is supposed to tell you how the association, how long everything's supposed to last. Well, the reserve study companies, nobody does any background checks on these people either. So who's to say that they're being ethical? Let me give you a perfect example. So when I moved in, the gutters had zero life yet left. The gutters have failed and have ran over with water and have intruded into our home. Well, the reserve company just last year when they did their reserve reporting gave our gutters another 11 years after they were at zero years when I moved in. How are the gutters gaining life when they were already expired? So I don't think the association reserve people are very honest when they're doing their reserve studies. So I wouldn't trust those either. I would call the city that you're going to move in, make sure that if anything was done, and I would ask, has anything been done on this property? And see, check for permits, do it yourself. I was an FHA home loan, and the FHA requires roof permits to be checked for. But when they did their inspection for condos, condos are pre-approved. So they never are audited. So if they had roofs put on, the very first time that they were ever inspected was when those condos were built and the FHA will do no inspection after that. They trust that the property managers and the boards are going to be honest with them. And we all know how that goes. We know that the property managers and the boards don't wanna be honest because they're trying to make money off of the, the corporation. So be very, very, uh, thorough when you're going through that resale cert. First of all, make sure that it's for the right year because again, I was given a 2012 resale cert when it should have been for 2014. There are many things that you need to look for when you're doing um, your resale cert. So those are the main things that I look for. They, the resale cert tells you everything. It's supposed to give you the CC and R's. It tells you whether there's anything past due. So my suggestion to you when you get that resale cert, your real estate agent's going to tell you that you only have a couple days. You have more than that. In the state of Washington, I think you have five days. And I would take all five days and I would really go through that. I would attend a board meeting. I would read all of the board minutes. Um, you are before purchase, you can go to a board meeting and meet the board members and the property management company and meet the neighbors, go door to door, knock on their doors, ask them how they like their neighborhood. If they don't like their neighborhood, I'm sure you're probably not, probably not going to like it either. So do your homework and make sure you're thorough. All right, see you on the next one.